Welcome back to another episode of Lost in the Farmer's Market Garden Life, where today we're looking at this lovely plant here, this lovely fern leaf herb. And I know what some of you are thinking, oh my god, he's covering dill. I've been waiting for this. It's go time. Eh. Wrong. This is Chamomilum nobil, also known as Roman chamomile. Yeah, that other ferny one that I took my sweet time getting to and I should be ashamed. But I'm not. Anyway, it's in the Asteraceae family, which means it's a daisy. The part, by the way, you harvest for tea is usually the flower heads when it gets around to flowering. Guilt trip. Anyway, chamomelum means Gre is from Greek. It means apple on the ground, referring to the scent the crushed foliage releases, which resembled apples of the time period. Nobilis means notable or excellent, and it sure is, and not in the Bill and Ted, I mean the literal excellent. Chamomile is the ultimate sleep aid. It also makes for a great tea, but you should limit your uptake. I'll get to that later. It is native to Western Europe, and uh, it's hardy in USDA zones 4 through 9. It's considered a perennial herb, impossibly herbaceous, possibly evergreen. Its pH preference is 5.6 to 7.5. Its exposure is full sun to partial shade. Its height can be up to 6 inches, and its width can be up to a foot. You should ideally space them with 2 to 4 inches between entire clumps to get them to grow together to form a nice chamomile mat. Which, by the way, planting chamomile as a ground cover is... Well, it's amazing. It smells great when you walk on it, but you shouldn't really trample on it too much and you get all the chamomile tea you can stand. But anyway, just a thought from a crazy gardener. Anyway, it's also got some interesting side names. <clears throat> Barnyard Daisy, Corn Feverfew, Ground Apple. Well, you knew that one was coming. Manzanilla. I don't know why I said it like that. Turkey Weed. Seriously, Turkey Weed? <laughs> turkey Weed. Uh, I forgot to put that in there. Turkey weed! I, I need like a banjo in the background when I say that. <laughs> Turkey weed? Who the heck decided to call it that? Here's Cletus out in Alabama. And he's proud of his accomplishment. And, okay, I'll stop. <laughs> anyway, so um, as I mentioned, it may be used as a ground cover or a lawn substitute because F lawn grass, Okay. Just saying it, putting it out there. I am a strong advocate for murderizing actual lawn grass and replacing it with anything else. You know, in the old horticulture books, it may be listed as Themis nobilis, which was its old name. So watch out for that. If you get old gardening books, it can happen to you. But anyway, as I mentioned, the flowers are used to make tea. The dried flowers in bought tea can be used to start new plants, though. When you buy a, ba a box of chamomile tea, and you open, tear open the tea bag and crush up the uh, the contents, some of those seeds are probably viable, and you can grow your own that way. I've seen people do it. I haven't tested it myself, so I know I know it works because the folks who are doing it were honest about their testing methods. So, yeah, it's one of those things where you can get cheap seeds. Cheap. The tea made of chamomile contains a compound called thuaone. You should limit it to one cup because it may cause digestive consequences. I'm not exactly talking like a case of this, the thunder squirts where you're going to have to have a thunder bucket in every room, but you just don't want that. Additionally, contact with the foliage may cause contact dermatitis. For some, you should test and see if you're one of those people who can't touch the cami cams. I mean, I'm not judging that these things do happen, but it is interesting. Now, about chamomile. Why haven't I covered it already? Um, my early attempts to grow it here in Zone 8A were horrendously tragic, and so I left it alone for a number of years and then decided to rebound back to it this year for this year's season. However, I got to it this late in the season because I bought a cell pack with four individual plants, and I wanted them to grow in, and look at how fluffy they are. I mean, they could be denser if I fertilized them more, I guess, but I mean... I've got chamomile. I've got a stable population of chamomile. And I found out, you know, partial sun is, partial sun is gooey. But anyway, so there's that. Now, why do I recommend chamomile for you? Well, 
aside from the fact that it's a good herb for general purpose use, um, the tea is good for you. Hey, Polka. Yep, cat butt. <clears throat> they love to do that. Come on, come on. Well, anyway, but then there's that. But also there's the possibility of using it for ground cover. There's the possibility of just growing it in a bowl planter like I did. I was going to insert this in one of the basket planters with a cocoa fiber basket. And I just never got around to it. Now it's sitting in an old um, bird, bird bath that no longer holds water. And it's just, it's a cool decoration. It'll eventually go in the ground, of course. I'm not going to, I'm not that evil. Oh my god, we are just... Mortal Kombat! I don't know what that was, guys, but you just seen the cats stare each other down. It's like Wild Kingdom in here. Anyway, so, you know, there's a bunch of things you can do with it. Now, when it eventually flowers, which I'm presuming is a spring-fall kind of thing in this climate, Zone 8A, North Carolina, um, Cumberland County region, uh, I'm guessing it, you know, it'll. for now, it's producing lots of foliage, and I'm not hurt about this. I want it to succeed. I want to actually have a sustainable living patch of chamomile. Just like I want a patch of true white medicinal yarrow for the same reason. And both, by the way, are in the Aster family. Medicines for life. But in your case, if you've grown chamomile, now there are two types. There's German chamomile and there's Roman chamomile. Roman chamomile is the one you will find in the hills of Greece and Italy. You'll find it growing wild, actually. Um, I actually have a landscaping client, because I do some landscaping on the side, who's going to Greece in the not-too-distant future. And I had to tell her, I said, you do know that the hills... No, she's going to Italy. Correction. I said, you know the hills of Italy and Greece are... You can find, like, chamomile, like, everywhere. If you step on it and it kind of smells like an apple, it's probably chamomile. And she's like, what? I'm like, yeah. Uh... And how I knew, I told her how I knew this. My mother went to Greece at one point, and this was pre 9 11, mind you. And she found it all over the hills, and she brought back bags of it. And that was back before the TSA was a real pain in the butt. I don't know if you can sneak some true Greek Roman chamomile home, but, you know, Greek, Roman, Italian, whatever, um, you can bring it home, but it's a thought. I'm pretty sure they'll confiscate it, but hey, you know, you could get a bag of tea and maybe crack that sucker open. Anyway. So that's all I have for you. If you have any thoughts about chamomile, you've grown it, you love it, you smoke it, you eat it, whatever, you use it to season things unconventionally, let me know. I want to hear about it. If you have any tips or tricks for growing it in Zone 8A that you'd like to share with everybody, please put that in the comment section. If you like this episode, please hit like. If you haven't already, please subscribe. It helps the channel. Um, as I mentioned, the Forge vlog is on hiatus till the beginning of next year, so there's that. But as always, folks, keep them growing. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for the next episode.